Okay guys, buckle up. Time for a whole bunch of make-ahead breakfast recipes. And a portion of this video is sponsored by Marquette Castings. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Fox, and if you have been around for a while on my channel, you will know how I love to do a lot of things in a little bit of time. Being a mom of two, two and under, and also running my YouTube channel, I've had to get creative with how I use my time. And one of the ways I like to save time is by making one breakfast for the whole week. That requires finding recipes that are make-ahead friendly and reheatable as well. You guys have been requesting this video for a while, and I'm so excited to share it with you. So before we get into some in-depth recipes, I thought I'd share with you how I make my own version of avocado toast. No, I'm not a California girl, although I've been there once and I don't think I had a single piece of avocado toast while I was there. But I've since fallen in love and this is how I like to make it. So Mondays are my meal prep days and so most Mondays you will find me hard boiling about a dozen eggs. And the way that I do this is that I just cover the eggs in water in a kettle, put them on the stove on high until it comes to a boil. And this is all with the lid on. And then when it comes to a boil, I will turn the burner off and just leave it sit there and set the timer for 20 minutes. And then after this, I strain off the hot water and give the eggs an ice water bath. they're cool this is where my daughter who is two takes over I'm such a fan of trying to get kids involved whenever you can I want my kids to grow up not dreading work and to feel the pride and accomplishment when something is done so I'm always looking for little jobs that my two-year-old can do and one of those is peeling hard-boiled eggs so usually I'll set her up at the sink and this morning I was actually combing her hair quickly while she was peeling eggs now, sometimes the eggs might look a little bumpy and little pieces might be taken out, but I've decided I can't let that bother me. I'd rather have her have the experience of working and doing a job. So that's the make ahead part of this recipe. And then I just store my hard boiled eggs in the fridge, peeled and ready to go. And then I can use them throughout the week. My kids love hard boiled eggs in lots of different versions but I'm gonna show you how I put them on my avocado toast. Okay, I'm gonna use this soft rustic white. I really love rye bread, but that's not what I have on hand right now, but I'm just gonna pop that into the toaster, get it nice and toasty. And then my avocado could be nicer, um, but I think I can make it do. It's just the tip looks a little extra soft. So um, yeah, I only need half an avocado for my avocado toast, and then the rest I usually give to the kids with their breakfast. Um, spoiler alert here, I'm actually making this as an afternoon lunch type of thing. Um, I was gone all morning and I did not get takeout or anything like that while I was shopping. I just came home and I'm going to make myself an avocado toast for lunch. So this is a great thing to make for any time of day really, but um, yeah, I just love how the hard boiled eggs were in the fridge and they are ready to go. So really all I gotta do is toast my bread and then assemble it. So you'll see how I do it right here. Okay, here's about how I like my toast done. Oop. And then I'm just gonna take an egg here. I just do one, cut it in my egg slicer. Trust me, I use this thing all the time. If you don't have one and you don't miss it, then don't buy one. But if you're missing it, I'm telling you right now, they're very handy. So I should have actually dealt with my avocado first. So let me just take this and I'm gonna cut off the tip because it looks a little soft. Um, but I just cut my avocado in strips like this, pretty thin, and then just hollow it out with a spoon and spread that on your toast. This is how it's looking. Okay, now the eggs. I'll hold this up here just so you guys can see it a little better. And you just mound these eggs on, you know. There, I used the whole egg. So it's looking like this now. Where's the avocado? I don't know, it's under there somewhere. <laughs> and then, I'll, I really like the yellow cheddar, but I have white cheddar today, so I'm just going to mound that on the top there yet. This is gonna be kind of like the glue that holds this avocado toast together. There we go. Now, we're ready for the good stuff. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of my egg blend on, which is paprika, celery salt, seasoned salt, um, salt and pepper. I think that's all, everything that's in there. And then also, look how pretty that is with that color on there. And then also, you can't forget the Everything Bagel Seasoning. You can get it at Trader Joe's or Aldi. Um, I wonder if Walmart has their own version, I'm not sure. But it looks like that. 
Okay, now I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for a couple seconds just to get the cheese all melty. Um, it's gonna make everything a little bit warm, but not too bad. You could fry this in a pan with like the lid on top just to steam it a little bit, but I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna show you the final step. Okay, the last step is Olive Garden Italian dressing. This is, of course, not a must-have. You can make this however you want. You can put tomatoes on your avocado toast, whatever you jolly well want, meat even. But this is what I do, and I just put a little puddle of Italian dressing on the corner of my plate, and then I use that to like dip my avocado toast in. And then sometimes it's so messy that I just end up drizzling this on top of the avocado toast. So, so good. Legit, this is one of my favorite foods. So yeah, try it out and let me know what you think. Okay, I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy this, but one more thing, it might surprise you, but my kids eat avocado toast too. No, not like this, it's way too messy, but um, if I give them hard boiled egg with the same seasonings on and some cheese and some avocado and a little bit of toast, just kind of all like in a salad type of form on their plate or on Fletcher's tray, they're eating avocado toast and they love it. They love it so much, especially the Italian dressing on it. Um, so yeah, this is actually really kid friendly. You just might not want to assemble it the same way. Okay, my next recipe is brought to you by Marquette Castings, and this is my own recipe, but I wanted to show you how I use a Dutch oven to make breakfast. Guys, it will change your life. If you do not have a Dutch oven, you're gonna want one after watching this video. But if you've heard of Dutch ovens before, you're probably familiar with how they're great for stews and soups and things like that but I'm going to be making a one pot breakfast casserole in my Dutch oven and it's so wonderful because there's only one pot to wash at the end and that is my Marquette Castings Dutch oven and isn't it beautiful? It's white and sleek and it actually has three layers of enamel inside and you can actually get a couple different colors. I just love the white because I like to actually serve my food in my Dutch oven right there on the table because it's actually pretty enough for that and it matches all my other serving ware as well. Here I'm cooking out of their six quart Dutch oven all of their products come with a lifetime warranty, and when I'm cooking with this, I just feel like my great-grandma would have used the same stuff back in the day. Then I'm gonna take the sausage back out and use the grease that's left in the bottom of the kettle to saute my hash browns in. This is the hash browns that I use from Aldi, but you can use whatever. Um, I ended up actually taking about two cups of these hash browns back out again then because it was a little too much for the meat that I had. I only had a pound of ground sausage. So just cover the bottom of your kettle two or three inches I would say. I also added some mini sweet peppers to the hash browns to give it a little bit of flavor as well as some onion salt, seasoned salt, and a few other things like that. You can add whatever you would like. Um, and I just sauteed that up in the sausage fat there a little bit, got them softer and a little bit caramelized. And remember I'm still using my same cast iron Dutch oven. If you are dealing with a really, really fatty meat, you probably wanna take some of the grease out, but my sausage didn't give off a ton of fat, so I just left it right as it was and sauteed everything up till it was soft and a little bit caramelized. So while this was going on, I was cracking my eggs and adding some spices to that. I have a seasoning blend that I refer to in a lot of my cooking videos. You just saw me use it in my avocado toast and I will put that down below as well as all the recipes or links to recipes that I talk about in today's video. I also added a little bit of heavy whipping cream. You could use half and half, you could use milk, you could even use water, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just a little splash in there with about 10 eggs and I whisked that all up. Then I layered the meat on top of the potatoes and poured the egg mixture all down through everything. Now guys, this is so brilliant. I took the lid of my Dutch oven and put it in the oven at 350 degrees and baked my breakfast casserole right like that in the same pot for 30 minutes. Now the time might vary for your oven or the size or depth of your Dutch oven, but mine took about 30 minutes and then I pulled it out, the eggs were set, just so, you don't want them overdone. And then I put about two cups of cheese on top and I just used what I had on hand, which was a mixture of Parmesan and cheddar. I would definitely recommend cheddar, mozzarella, farmer's cheese, Munster cheese, something like that. The Parmesan was a little sharp, but it was actually really, really good. My husband got went back for seconds and thirds. And so I put it back in the oven again without the lid on, just for the cheese to get all melty and gooey and delicious. <laughs> so now that you all want a Marquette Castings Dutch oven, let me tell you how you can get one. I have a special offer for you, and you can click on the link in the description box to get your own Marquette Castings Dutch Oven. And remember, there's a lot of different colors, and the white is just the one that I chose. So, yeah, this recipe was so amazing, and I'm so glad that I found a new way to use a Dutch oven besides just the normal stuff. And also, remember, campfire season is coming up. You can actually cook over the fire with a Dutch oven. So, yeah, it's just super versatile, and I was so excited when Marquette tapped me on the shoulder and said, Hey! We want to sponsor a video. So thank you so much, Marquette Castings. 
And guys, don't forget to check out that link down below. I actually served this one pot breakfast casserole for supper. Yes, we like to do breakfast for supper occasionally. And then the kids and I ate it the next morning or two for breakfast and it was just as good the next day. If you feel like it's a little dry, you could add a splash of milk or even some more cheese to make it a little bit more gooey. And yeah, this is a great make ahead breakfast option that would last you for a while. I will have another breakfast casserole recipe in this video, so make sure you stay till the end because that one is my absolute, absolute favorite because it involves sweet potato. And yeah, I never liked sweet potato, but this recipe, I love it. So I hope you guys stick around to the end so you don't miss it. It is a one of a kind because I kind of invented it myself. <laughs> So I just pulled a bag of these Make Ahead Breakfast um, pizza pockets, I guess you could call them, out of the freezer. And these are so nice. So what I like to do is just thaw them in the fridge overnight, and then in the morning I lay them on top of my toaster. I think it would fit in, but I'm always afraid it'll just flake apart and have all kinds of like scrambled eggs in the bottom. So I just lay it on the top and let it toast on one side and then the other. And then sometimes I'll pop it in the microwave for another like 10 seconds yet if I want to, just to make sure it's done. Um, but they're so good. And what you do is you can just use any soft pretzel recipe that you like. Um, I can put mine down below that I like. I like the ones with like a little bit of brown sugar in them. Anyway, so this is actually soft pretzel dough. And then you just put in your eggs and um, whatever toppings you like, meat, whatever, lots of cheese. And yeah, you just bake them in the oven until they are almost done. I like to leave them a little bit undone so that way when I toast them, they get the rest of the way done so they're not too crunchy and crispy. Um, and then I, I know a lot of people like ketchup with their eggs. I love this sweet and spicy mustard, and I really like it with my eggs, so. Yeah, it's a really handy thing just to grab in the morning. Also, you can make these like strombolis with just like lunch meat and stuff in and eat them for a different meal, but they're actually really good as a make-ahead breakfast. So yeah, I will put all the like details and directions down below. I did not film it because I was with my cousins when we got together and we made a whole pile of them. Um, it's just kind of like a nice project to do with like friends or family because you know it takes work You have to make the dough and then all the fillings and then bake them in the oven and everything It's kind of a process, but it's really I mean I'm so glad when I have these in the freezer I can just go hey guys I'm gonna share with you a really quick and fast breakfast that we really like to make a lot and you can make it ahead Which makes it all that much more beautiful um, And that is just classic waffles or I'm gonna put the recipe down below you could also make them into pancakes and another beautiful thing about this all is that if you really don't have the time, you can just use regular, like, you can just use bought batter, which is completely fine. And it'll make it go that much faster, you know, just using a Kodiak cake mix or something like that. So to start off with, it calls for two cups of flour, and I actually like to substitute some of my flour with wheat flour. I like to just add some whole wheat flour in it to bulk it up a little bit and make you fuller, I guess. I don't know, I just love the texture. It makes it a little more gritty. And I use just um, a half a cup of whole wheat flour and then the rest I use white flour, but you could do the ratio however you liked. My favorite thing to do is to make a big batch and put the leftovers in the fridge for the week and then we'll just put them in the toaster and they're actually, like I like the texture of them better out of the toaster a day later than right there fresh out of the waffle iron. And like I said, if you don't have a waffle iron, that's fine. You can go ahead and totally turn these into pancakes. I don't have great advice on how to do pancakes heated up the next day, but I'm assuming you could put them in the toaster too. Um, I just haven't done it, so I'm not going to recommend it. Um, but yeah, we are we love waffles around here, and I grew up with them all the time. You can top them with so many different things, which you can just do regular syrup, or uh, I like to do butter and strawberry jelly, homemade whipped topping. Some people do peanut butter. Yeah, there's just so many different options, and you can make it as fruity and desserty or as hearty as you really want to. Um, my mom used to actually make chicken gravy sometimes with big old pieces of chicken, and it was so good. And um, that was a really good actually supper we had we had that for supper sometimes so yep two eggs in there yet the one bone I have to pick with waffles is that um, there's just not as protein packed but if you guys are really conscious about protein in the morning and you know making sure you're full um, Kodiak cakes are an awesome option we really like those you can get them at Target I know they're supposed to be healthy and whenever something is supposed to be healthy Josh runs far away but we really like Kodiak cakes so that would be another option, but I will put my recipe down below in the description box. So let's get going. This is gonna make about four big waffles, um, but if you wanna make a whole bunch for the week, I would just say double it or even triple it, depending on the size of your family. And then I just put them covered in the fridge and we just pop them in the toaster the next morning. Like I said, super easy. And if you don't have a waffle iron, go ahead and just check out a Black Friday sale. Um, you can find really good deals at Kohl's I found on Black Friday. Or 
just skip the waffles altogether and do pancakes. But we use our waffle iron so often. I even have a waffle wolfie pie recipe I love to use. So there we go. Fill it up to there. And yes, I just make this a messy process. It probably wouldn't have to be as messy as I'm making it, but mmm. Look at all those pretty like flecks of whole wheat flour in there. So when they are super golden brown and done, I like to get them out and they're always more limp out of a waffle iron and that's why I like, but some people love that of course, but that's why I like to do them in the toaster the next day. So there's one, just spray it again. And we'll just repeat the process. I like to do this while I'm like emptying out the dishwasher or something like that. Um, yeah, you can definitely multitask with this. <laughs> it doesn't have to be just standing there babysitting the waffle iron the whole time. Another great way to make this like more baby friendly, toddler friendly, is skip the syrup altogether and just do milk. Um, and that kind of makes the waffles like more soggy and they can eat them better and it's still like wet. That makes sense, but you don't have to give them like sugar. Next, I wanted to mention this baked oatmeal recipe that I actually showed in a different video, which I will link down in the description box. But I make this oatmeal super regularly. We love it and it is very filling. You mix it up and pop it in the oven. You can top it with whatever you want. You can put fruit in there, raisins. I like to do chocolate chips for myself and raisins for Josh. And the kids, of course, go for the chocolate chips. Yeah, this recipe is so versatile and talk about filling. We love it a lot. And if you'd like more details on that, you'll have to go check out that video. But I will put the exact recipe down below in the description box. And another recipe I just had to bring up in case you missed it is this German pancake recipe or Dutch babies, whatever you want to call them. This recipe is breaking Instagram and it is not mine. It is from Taste of Homes and I will link it down below. It is so good, but you cannot make it without making the homemade syrup that goes with it. It is a buttermilk syrup and you don't actually need buttermilk to make it. I show a hack in that video of how I make my own homemade buttermilk syrup and I don't even use buttermilk. So yeah, if you didn't try this one yet, you don't wanna miss it. It's so, so good and it's super filling too, unlike some pancakes because it's mostly egg. And one more shout out before I move on to the last recipe and that is this video here that I posted a while back this summer, it was a chit chatty multitask with me and I was making make ahead breakfast sandwiches. And I like to do this a couple times a year and just store some in the freezer and they're ready to go. You can use whatever meat you like, whatever cheese you like, even whatever bread you like. We love the buttery croissants from Costco or you could do English muffins. You could even do regular old toast, I'm sure. But it's so handy to pull those out. Who needs to stop at Wawa or Sheets? You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> those are local gas stations around here. But anyway, who needs to stop at a gas station when you have your own homemade breakfast sandwiches ready to go in the freezer? So make sure you check out that video as well if you want all the details. Okay, moving on to my final recipe, and this one I saved the best for last, in my opinion. So guys, I'm sure you've seen all over the place a sweet potato hash that you just make in a pan on the stove top. And I made this a couple times and I kept thinking, this is so good, I wish I could make it ahead, you know, and not have to do all that work in the morning every time. Well, I kind of developed my own recipe using this. Now, okay, I'm making myself sound so much smarter than I really am. I'm not that smart, I just kind of, yeah, you guys can figure this out for yourself too. But let me tell you what I did, and it was so delicious. This is my favorite recipe of the whole video, so if you're still here, good for you, because you're gonna wanna try this one. So first, you're gonna saute your meat in a frying pan, and it doesn't really matter what meat you like. I use sausage here today, but I've already done bacon as well. So while the meat is sauteing, you are gonna go ahead and work on your sweet potato. So you're going to take a sweet potato or two, and you might not know how many you're gonna need at first, but just start a while. Peel the sweet potato, and then use your peeler and make sweet potato ribbons with the peeler. You just basically peel the potato till it disappears. <laughs> Once you have the potato completely peeled, you're gonna drizzle some olive oil in a pan on the stovetop and 
saute your sweet potato in there along with whatever seasonings you like. I will put down below what I like to do. I like to use my egg blend here and just sprinkle some of that on top as well as rosemary and thyme. I just find like they're really, really good on sweet potato. Um, and just saute that up until it's a little bit soft, a little bit caramelized, and it just picks up all that good flavor. You're also going to need to shred some cheese somewhere in the process, and I love cheddar, but you do you whatever cheese you prefer. Also, whisk up some eggs and add any seasonings you like, any milk or creamer or anything like that that you like to do. I just usually do a splash of water or, you know, you could do half and half, whatever. And then I add paprika, celery salt, seasoned salt, salt and pepper into my eggs and just whip them up nicely so they're nice and combined. You don't want any egg whites floating around. Um, just get it all nicely mixed up and then you're ready to assemble. So take a 9 by 13 pan and you want to spray it down and then you want to arrange your sweet potato ribbons around the edge kind of like a nest. So I just put them around the edge kind of like a barrier and then I'm going to put my meat and my eggs in the middle and you can put the cheese on top right now or you can wait till later if you'd rather but it doesn't really matter. And then what I love to do is take Trader Joe's everything but the bagel seasoning and sprinkle it all around the edge. Again, I'm just using the off brand from Aldi. It's just as good. In fact, it's probably the same thing, let's be honest. So I sprinkle that around the edge. It makes it look super fancy. And then I sometimes like to spread more of my paprika, egg mixture stuff on the top. That seasoning just makes it look really pretty too. I've actually made this already by adding some spinach on the top yet as well. The frozen spinach adds some color and some greens into our diet, so I really like to do that. But this morning, I skipped that. But yeah, you could add peppers, onions, whatever you want. Feel free to use your imagination, but this is the basic bones of the recipe, and it is delicious, let me tell you. So pop it in the oven and just let it bake until the eggs are set just so they're set, you do not want them to be hard. Then you can add the cheese, or if you already did, you could add even more cheese or whatever, it's up to you. The cheese should be nice and melty as well. Dish it up and serve it and it's going to be delicious, but even better, it's gonna be amazing the next day too. I feel like the flavors just sit there and settle a little bit overnight, and the next day it's good, and the next day even. Um, I make a nine by 13 pan of this, and between me and my two kids, who yes, they eat about the same amount as I do for breakfast, um, we usually clean it up in two to three days. So there's another great recipe for you. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. And then sometimes I'll top it with more cheese or more bagel seasoning. Some people like hot sauce, that's not me, but yeah, it's so, so good. My kids devour it. Like the sweet potato somehow makes it super, super like, I don't know, it adds so many dimensions of like flavor to it. It's sweet and it's like earthy, I don't know. You gotta try it. And the best thing is now I'll just put this in the fridge and we'll just scoop out of it tomorrow. And it'll probably last us two or three breakfasts. Um, Josh doesn't do sweet potato anything. <laughs> so it'll just be me and the kids, but it is so good. And I'm so glad I finally figured out a make ahead version of it. I hope this was some awesome inspiration for you to save you some thinking and to also save you some time by making things ahead. Breakfasts don't always have to be made last minute. In fact, you can make them ahead of time. So let me know if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more cooking videos or if you just appreciate all my effort with this video. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you make any of these recipes. I love to see your recreations and the way that you guys improvise and come up with your own twist on these recipes. Also, do yourself a big favor and check out that link in the description box to get your own Marquette Casting Dutch oven or whatever you'd like to buy on their website. I know that you will love it. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.